Okay. Hello. Hello. I can't see you. Oh, now there you go. Hey, Danielle. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, cool. All right. So you ready? I am. I, I think. I mean, as long as uh, as long as this works for you, I just wanted to get outside because it was so nice out. Okay. Um. So I have someone. Um, so I'm having problems with Zoom. So I'm having um someone film this for us. Okay. Because I, I for some reason I can't I can't record. I can see you, but I can't record. But um. So yeah. So we're just gonna get into it. So. Yeah. <laughs> So you ready to have some fun? You know the premise of my show, right? I, I, I've seen a couple of shows. I've seen the fun. I'm ready to have it. Good. So I just, good afternoon and welcome to my show, Who's That Girl from Roxbury? And today we're welcoming filmmaker Daniel Callahan, and we're going to be talking about his movie, Come On In. So, um, yeah, if you just want to introduce yourself to the public and let them know uh, what you're about and how you got started in films. Sure. Uh, so, uh, like she said, my name is Daniel Callahan. I'm, I'm a multimedia artist and designer and uh, a filmmaker. Uh, and how I got started in film, it really was actually through music. Um, I was doing music for a while. And after a couple of music videos, I was I was really interested in being uh, behind the camera. Um, and, you know, when I got back to Boston, uh, I went to grad school at uh, Emerson College um, and uh, learned about film. Uh, and now I'm now I'm doing it. So now where are you originally from? I'm from all over the place. Uh, <laughs> okay. I, I'm I was born in Philadelphia. Okay. Um, and then pretty soon after I was born, we moved to Medford and then okay. Uh, we moved to Cambridge and then we moved to Roxbury. Uh, okay. and I went to school back in Philly and then went out to California for a while to do music. And now I'm back here in Boston. So I've been all over. So you're nomadic, you're nomadic. I'm a little I'm nomadic, nomadic too, yep. so I, I get it, I get it. So yep. I want to talk about your movie, Come On In, because I saw it, I was on the, you know, I was on the Roxbury Film Festival committee this year. Yes. Um, and I saw it and um, I was like, cause I, I can be a little bit of a movie snob because I'm a writer. So I'm kind of like, I know when I'm being sold like crap. Like there's a lot of crap being sold right now. Like when I watch a movie, I can tell when it's just like thrown together or I'm like, this, this story's not cohesive. This character's coming out of nowhere. Like, what is this? But when I watched your film, I was like, okay, what, are we, what, what am I getting into? Cause I met you briefly. Because we were on um, the New Western Community Dog Committee together with Arts Planning Committee. Yep. So, um, and then when I saw you, I was like, oh, I know this guy, you know? So I watched the film and I was like, this is interesting. I was like, and I was like, um, what's going on with this character? Like, um, what, because what I got from the character was kind of like, I, I felt like maybe um, he was having some kind of um, a spiritual awakening or I felt like he was like living in duality. So, there was so much going on with him, but I just want to know what inspired um, this film. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in hearing what people think about it and what you got from it, because uh -huh. um, there is a lot going on. And I guess what inspired this was was my own personal journey. You know, like I, I definitely went through a period in life where uh, I felt like my mind was not a was not a good place. Um, okay. And uh, I think part of the process of me working through that was was really what this this film was about. And it, and it was it was very much a spiritual experience, um, as well as an artistic experience as well as a you know mental journey that that uh that the character goes on and you know it's it's certainly not biographical like you know i didn't uh what happens in the film is not necessarily what happened in my life but on a, on a in a mental kind of state in terms of the the types of things and the types of situations that he finds himself in were very much um inspired by my own sort of journey within myself 
And don't you find like when you like like when you when you write a character or a story or anything like that, don't you find it funny like when you're like people that know you personally try to find you, like they try to find you in the character. And it's like, why are you you you're thinking too much? Just like just watch the movie, enjoy it. Because they'll be like, they'll be like, I th that sounds like something you would do. Is that you? Did you do that? And you're just like, it's just just watch the movie and just tell me what you think. Stop trying to look for me and and, and just enjoy the film. So I want to know. Um, it's just it's kind of you just kind of touched on that, but I I really want to know what was going on in the in the character's mind because. What I got, what, what my take, because I just, I watched it and I loved it. And I just want to say, after I watched it, I told all the, I said, he's gonna, I said, he's gonna win. He's gonna win. And you won. But um, I just want to know what was going on in his mind because it was kind of like when he, even when he was at work, um, that, that whole hum job, because we know, like, especially for artists, like, um, or people that don't even realize they're artists, like, they can work a nine to five job and they'll never be fulfilled. Like it's like you're on, you're in the rat race. You'll never be fulfilled. Like it's like, yeah. and I just caught that from him. Like he was kind of like, he was at his job, but it was like, how do I get out of this? Like, how, how can I get out of here? Like what, what, what was going on with, in his mind? That's you mean when he was, when he was on that job basically, or just throughout yeah, the Yeah. Like, like no like when he was at work i just felt like because i've had this feeling like you're at work and you're just like i just feel like i need to be somewhere else right now i feel like i need to be <laughs> i feel like i need to take a road trip across the country like this is so lame like i just because then he got the phone call yeah. and then he ended up in some mansion yeah and i was like what happened you know but it but it's still, but it was intriguing because it was like one moment he was he he was at work and he was like, okay, this is this sucks, and he's on the phone with this lady and she, and she kept saying so I can't remember what she was saying to him like go to the you you're the you know you're the writer you know what he, what, what she was saying to him, <laughs> but um, yeah. yeah I just felt like his mind was just it was his mind was just different I think his mind had me intrigued. Mm. Mm hmm. I mean, I think, I think, uh, I think what I tried to do with the film was to have you, the viewer, really in his shoes because the whole time he's not sure what's real and what's not. Um, okay. And so, you know, um, yeah, was this voice even real? Uh, is he making all this stuff up? Is, mm. is he seeing at work, you know, like, and and all over the place these sort of these sort of images are, are those real? Are they in his head? You know, it's clear that he doesn't have a firm grasp on reality. Um, yeah. And like, I, I wanted to play around with that because when you really think about reality, right? Like reality is basically just your perception. It's what you're perceiving. Right. And so if, you know, your perception becomes off then your reality becomes off. And so mm -hmm. when we think of reality, we think of something that's very like fixed, something that's like, you know, absolute. And it's really not, it's very, right. It's very, um, depending on who you are, where you stand, your perspective, your, your upbringing, your experience, and your mental state, it, it, it varies extremely between one person to the other. So I wanted to sort of play around with that. You know, like what happens when you're not sure if um, your imagination is, uh, is imagination or if it's real. And so, right. um, you know, yeah, he takes this job, which he knows is not for him. Um, it's, you know, pretty much the worst job in terms of cold calling people you know it's it's I've, I've, I've done cold calling jobs before that was definitely taken from experience and it's like right, that, right. in terms of um in terms of like interaction with other humans that's the most like dehumanizing thing because it's nobody you talk to wants to talk to you you know like right. you're, you're you're infringing upon people's time and uh <laughs> You know, you're you're just that guy. You know, you're that right. Person. You're that guy. Like, stop calling me. You're annoying. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. We've all been cold called. No one likes that. Um, right, right. So you know, your whole day is basically spent uh, um, interrupting people and and uh, taking their time when they don't want that. So he went from there. You know, basically the bottom to this opportunity. Uh, 
you know, for him to take a risk, for him to, to try something new, for him to go somewhere where he didn't know what was going on. Um, and I like but, the fact that um, Andrea was your mom. Andrea Lyman was your mom in the film. <laughs> I love Andrea. So I just, yeah. hey, Andrea, I just want to give you a shout out. <laughs> She's yeah. dope, man. She's dope. She, she, yeah. um, I met her at the Roxbury International Film Festival the year, a oh. couple years beforehand. Mm -hmm. uh, so shout out to the Roxbury International Film Festival. They, uh, they basically got me my two, two of the, two of my actors I got, I learned and, and met through the Roxbury International Film Festival. Okay, shout out to Lisa Simmons and Allison Simmons and all the people yeah. on the, on the festival committee. But, um, okay, so, you know the premise of my show. Enough of that, like, I'm done, okay? All right, all right. I'm done. I'm done with all that serious, like, like I'm, I'm done. We're not, we're not doing that. Okay, so. You ready to have some fun? Ready. <laughs> you don't look ready. <laughs> don't look ready. All right, you, be you better get ready. Okay. So I want to know who are your top three favorite basketball players of all time? I mean, Jordan's got to be on there. Uh, I would say Allen Iverson. And, yes. Uh, oh, who's number three? That's tough. Um, man, that's tough. There's too many. There's too many folks for number three. That's so funny. I'll tell you my top three. Okay. Clyde Drexler. Okay. Michael Jordan and Allen Iverson. So that's funny. You said Iverson. What now? Why is Iverson yours? And I'll tell you why he's mine. I mean, Iverson is everybody's favorite. I think you so. You can't. You can't have. You can't have. And one mixtapes. You can't have uh, you can't have long shorts. You can't have cornrows. You can't have uh, you know crossover dribbles. You can't have any of that without Iverson. He's he's like he's the man. He's a beast. Yeah, I think the reason why I like I he's one of my top three is because in basketball people don't realize he's short. He's not a tall. He's not tall. You know. But um, he's just a beast. Like I love, I just love his competitive spirit. I just love people who are fighters. And I've seen him get literally knocked down on the court, and like, and he's a, he's a small dude, and get back up, and just like, I and I was, and I respect that in people. I like people who, like, literally can get knocked down and get back up, like physically and mentally. Like I can respect that. And when I saw the way he was so like, he's a fighter like that. I said, that's my guy. Even if he wasn't a basketball player, I would still want to like hang out with him just because like I just love people like that. But anyways, so the first time you went to the barbershop, who'd you go with and what was the experience like? Oh, man. I used to hate going to the barbershop. What? But, yeah. I mean, because I went as a little kid. I went as a little kid. So, okay. So... Uh, to answer your last question, I think I think if I had to choose a third, it would probably be LeBron, and okay. that's because I feel like unlike unlike Jordan, even though Jordan is amazing, I feel like LeBron is a better man off the court than he is on the court. Okay. Um. So, uh, in terms of in terms of the barbershop, yeah, I used to go to the barbershop. So there'd be a bunch of you know older dudes arguing all the time. And I would go, you know, I'd go with my yeah. brother, I'd go with my, right. my, my dad, right? Um, and I was always so scared because if they messed my hair up, so I used, we used to go to this like <clears throat> super conservative apostolic church, right? And okay. so they like, they had this thing about having like, if, you're, if your hair was too short, it was cut too short, they, that was like a sin. And so... Oh. Yeah, it was it was deep. Uh, and so when I went there, I was always nervous about how they're going to cut my hair. Because if they didn't cut my hair right, I was, you know, I was going to get it at church. Oh, uh, damn. Several times they they gave me those, those, those like tight fades and I was in trouble. So I was always scared. Uh, I was scared of the clippers. Uh, oh. They were all loud and they were sharp. And, and oh, always want to get the, you always want to get the right dude who can who can who's who's nice with it, because you always had somebody who was really good. And then you had the other dude, you yeah, know what right. I mean? Like, and, and depending on, you know, you wait, you wait for like hours to get your hair cut and then you just hope, <laughs> you just hope. 
you hope you get in that right chair because it's like that's that's your head for the next month, you know. Okay, God. so I, I'm, hearing, I'm hearing, I'm hearing, first I'm hearing religious trauma yep. related to your hair. Yep. Oh God, I hope you've healed from that. Uh, and then <laughs> I'm hearing a lot of other stuff. What happened? We don't want you going to no more barber shops no more. But anyway, oh, <laughs> God. Okay, so this is one of my favorite, one of my favorite questions because I love, I just, love this show what is your favorite episode of the boondocks you said of the boondocks yes all right it's getting very windy over here all right so boondocks to be honest i'm gonna have to be honest with you i don't really watch boondocks like that okay uh, but i would say the the black jesus one was probably the what was when it first the first Black Jesus episode was pretty good. Uh -huh. um, All right. Yeah, but but I'm not a big Boondocks cartoon. I like the, I like the I like the cartoon like in the newspaper. That was that was the joint. Okay, you liked it then. Okay, okay. So since so I have a, I have a backup question for that one because a lot of people don't like really watch the Boondocks. But okay, so what is your favorite episode of A Different World? See, I. I <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I would say I would say uh, any of the crossovers. Whenever they brought whenever they brought people from the Cosby Show, okay. into different worlds, or um, who else did they do crossovers with? I think they might have done crossovers um, with Living Single at one point. I don't know. I I I don't think that happened. <laughs> oh, okay. But, I mean, but, I know okay. they did crossovers with other with the other black shows on at the time. I um, think did. I can't remember who else. I know they uh, did with Fresh Prince. I know they I did with that one. I that can one see was that. They, they had okay. that guy in uh in Fresh Prince. So now what's your favorite episode of Fresh Prince? Oh man. That's hard because all of them are good. I would say I would say like the one that hit me the hardest though was when he was when he when he met his father. That one, okay, was, yeah. that one was tough, but for like dramatic reasons. It was the first time I saw him cry. Right. Like, Damn. First of all, this dude can act. And I think that's all, the first like, time I'm... we saw his act. Right. Yeah. I think that's the first time we saw his acting range. Yeah, yeah. Because um, before he was like so goofy, you know. Yeah. But um. But I was anyway. you know, I was a New York Undercover fan. You, did you watch New York Undercover? Yes, of course. I joined. Of course. Yeah, I, I remember New York Undercover. Um. Yeah, I used to watch that. Like, yeah, I I don't even know what my favorite episode of that show. I pretty much like all the episodes of New York Undercover. Um, oh. Yeah, but you know what's always good when Ice T came on as the villain. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, he was the best. Like when he came on, those those okay, that was those were my favorite episodes. Whenever Ice T came on as the villain, that was it for me. So I want to know. And this is my signature question. Like, I ask everybody this question. So everybody, like, yeah, you should be always be prepared for this question if you come on my show. I want to know, what is your favorite backyard barbecue song? Go. I had some time to think about this because I saw one of your other interviews. So uh, it really depends <laughs> on my mood. Depends on my okay. mood. If I want to do, if I want to do hip hop, if I'm in a hip hop feel, it would be uh, Naughty by Nature. Um, um, uh, Hip Hop Hooray. Okay. Uh, if, if it's, if it's, if I'm feeling more like classic, it would be anything by the Isley Brothers. Oh, nice. Uh, okay. Before, obviously before R. Kelly. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, you know, you, yeah. The, 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 the classic Isley Brothers. Um, nice. Footsteps, maybe, but yeah. Okay, all right. So now, how can people find your film? Come on in if they want to watch it online. Like, where, where should they go to find it? So you 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 can't watch it online yet, um, mm -hmm. but uh, we will be showing at the at the Montreal Independent Film Festival. That's our, okay. that's our festival we'll be showing at. We're doing the whole festival circuit, so uh, 
we'll be doing that for a little bit. But as soon as it does come online, we will announce it. If you, you can always go to the film's website, comeoninfilm.com, uh, www.comeoninfilm.com. Make sure to include the film part, because if you don't, that's going to take you to a whole other part of the, the uh, internet. So comeoninfilm.com. Oh. All right. So now when I have people on, I always, I always, cause I'm always asking people questions and, you know, and I feel like um, sometimes people want to maybe know something about me. So I always, I'm always open to like ask the guests, like, is this something that you want to know about me? So, um, you know, I saw, I saw your, uh, I watched your first, uh, I'm gonna put you on blast. I watched your first workshop that you gave on fear. Okay, yeah, that? fear. Uh -huh. Of course, I was there. That was, first of all, that was dope. Like you, you dropped some gems. Um, I, hope, I hope you're still doing that talk. Uh, I need to, I, I just, that's funny you say that cause I'm gonna, I was thinking about starting to, I was like, I need to start doing more, more motivational videos. Yeah. Yeah, that was great. Uh, so I actually learned a lot about you through that. Mm. Uh, but uh, let me think, something I want to know. What's, what's like your, what's your dream? Like what's your dream in terms of where you want to be, you know, professionally or, or even um, creatively kind of what, what's, what do you kind of, what's your ideal place? Um, you know, I have so many things that I do like I write music. Um, I actually, I'll send you my song that I did with, uh, yeah, I'll send you later. But um, I write music. Um, I really want to see um, one of my books on film. Um, I was reading, I was, cause I, cause I, cause I published nine books. So every now and again, like I'll go back and I'll read, I'll read my book just to see like how I feel. So I read my book, um, a letter from Orchid maybe two weeks ago. And I was like, I really want to see this on, I, be, I, I need to see this on screen. Um, and then um, I started writing a screenplay. Um, and I, I think I'm on like act three or four or something like that. Like I have my hands in so many different things, but my dream is to just basically do what I love for a living um, and, and, and get paid just to do what I love. Like, I can't see myself working a nine to five job anymore. I just can't do that. So the ultimate goal is for me to just make a living off of my art, you know? And if I can't, then I'll just live in my car. <laughs> just, just, but I mean, you know what I mean? But it's like, hey. once you're an artist, like, you, and, and, and you, okay. Once, I, I'll say, once you know your purpose, mm. it's hard to kind of go back to like, doing a nine to five or just like, okay, his, this is a, so my ultimate dream is to just uh, be creative and just um, make a living off of it. You know, but I have my, my, I have my hands in so many different things. So yeah, I just can't choose just one. Like today I was like, I need to do a motivational video, you know, like, and then someone else asked me recently to collaborate with them on a song. So I was like, okay like i think you should just if you have several if you have several gifts you need to use all of them you know like i really feel like if someone's telling you just stick to one thing that they're telling you to limit yourself like no because just because you're small don't make me small like i'm i'm huge i'm a lion i could do 12 things at once <laughs> so so yeah but um yeah that's my dream yeah that's what's up so yeah, well, thank you for coming on my show. I'm so honored to have you on. I'm so glad you won uh, for your film. And so um, everybody out there, all you viewers, if you like what you saw, please like my channel, subscribe to my channel and share. And so Mr. Daniel Callahan, thank, thank you for you. being on. And um, I'll talk to you soon. All righty. All right.